Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video and so we're going to be talking about these two disturbances and the models are showing something very very interesting for the coming week. Uh, maybe a tropical cyclone coming from that disturbance out in the Atlantic affecting sections of the Caribbean and so uh, we'll be taking a look at what they're expecting and before I go into details... Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with that one that is about to cross over into the southeastern Caribbean. And so we're seeing that the chance has been constant at 20% and imminent development of this is not expected. So conditions are expected to become more conducive as it approaches the central and western Caribbean. So it is now expected to make its way maybe south of Jamaica and maybe develop within that region as it heads to the uh western caribbean right there about and so let's see what's going to be happening with this but looking at it on satellite we're seeing that we have all this shower and thunderstorm activity making its way over portions of the windward islands and so if you're in any of the windward islands let me know in the comments what the weather is like in your area if you're getting some rainfall from this and so why isn't the chance really increasing for this system and so let's go ahead and take a look at current conditions out there and so we're taking a look at this water vapor map and when we see those yellows that indicates dry air meanwhile the blues and those green colors they indicate more moisture and we see that we have dry air surrounding this wave and that is probably the reason we're not really seeing it getting itself together quickly uh, but of course it wants it's going to be making its way westward it might encounter more conducive conditions and intensify into a tropical cyclone and then looking at the wind shear map for it we're seeing that it is actually in some favorable shear right now so the shear is not really a problem at this time so it's really that dry air that is surrounding the system that is causing it to not really get itself together very quickly so let's see what's going to be happening with it all right and let us go on to the second disturbance this might be another uh concern for the caribbean as you're going to be heading into next week so as of right now the chance is at 20 percent still the system has merged off the coast of africa and so it is going to be continuing westward and so so it might encounter some favorable conditions and it will be moving pretty quickly as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it on satellite and here we're seeing that we have this area that is where a tropical wave is located. However, a little bit to the west southwest of it, take a look at all that convection. That has been there for quite some time now and it's just a little interesting but let's see what's going to be happening here. But that air of convection to the west southwest of the wave has been pretty interesting i've been keeping an eye on it for a while so let's see what's going to be happening there but i just think that one of these systems will dominate all right and so going to what the models are expecting starting off with gfs of course so this is thursday of next week the first of september and gfs is expecting that the caribbean wave will be making its way uh just over the region where jamaica is uh maybe as a system trying to get itself together and regardless of it being a tropical cyclone or not if it's going to be having all that convection associated with it and making its way close enough to the area it could bring along with it a lot of rainfall however take a look off the coast of africa there we are seeing some development there is a pressure of 994 millibars uh, there which is the pressure of a tropical storm headed to friday the 2nd of september gfs is expecting that the caribbean disturbance will be continuing to the uh, maybe a bit to the northwest with a pressure of now 1002 millibars maybe uh, intensifying into a tropical storm and so gfs is not expecting that the wave that is out in the atlantic is going to be making its way to the caribbean but rather making a turn up to the north but it is showing that we will have this disturbance intensifying in the gulf of mexico and making its way toward the gulf coast of texas so we'll have to wait and see what's going to be happening that time because there can be a lot of changes and there have been a lot of changes and so let us go on to euro one of the other uh, best models out there so going to Thursday around the same time, Thursday the 1st of September, the model is not showing that we will be having development in the Caribbean. However, it is showing quite a bit of moisture 
Now we take a look to the east of that and we see that we have what seems to be maybe a tropical storm approaching the Caribbean. We see a pressure here of 1,002 millibars and then another system behind it with the same pressure of 1,002 millibars. But the one before that one seems a lot more compact. And so going to the 3rd of September next Saturday, here we are skiing Euro expecting that this will be making its way towards the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm. And then behind it, uh, that system may be looking to struggle a little bit out there. And then here's a closer view of it, a pressure of 919 millibars uh, approaching the Caribbean. And so let us go ahead and take a look at Icon. So Icon is showing something a little bit similar to what uh, Euro is expecting. So this is by Tuesday, the 30th of uh, August though so it is not going as far out as GFS but by this time we do see that we have these low pressure areas uh, across the Atlantic region maybe making their way westward but across the Caribbean we do see an increase in moisture in some areas so uh, the model is not really expecting development up to this point for that Caribbean system so it's really just uh, GFS that has been really consistent about the system developing and becoming a major hurricane so I'm uh, not saying that it is impossible because we have seen so many storms that might make their way across the Caribbean, but once they enter the Gulf into some highly conducive conditions, they rapidly intensify and become major systems just before landfall, especially late August, go into September. So we definitely have to keep an eye on all of these systems out there because we're approaching the peak of the hurricane season. So we'll see what's going to be happening, but we're seeing the possibility for two new uh, two new storms and the next two names to be used for this season are of course Danielle and Earl so let's see if we're going to be having those waves emerging off Africa and developing and let's see if that Caribbean system will manage to get itself together and intensify into a tropical cyclone but as of right now uh, we just have these two disturbances out there both given a 20% chance to possibly develop and intensify and we can see these chances increasing if they're going to be getting themselves together and if a favorable environment is going to be persistent ahead of them and so so contrasting what is uh, anticipated from this hurricane season, many persons would think that because it is an above average season that is expected, we should be seeing a lot of activity right now. And as a matter of fact, we should have had that D-name storm and we haven't had it yet. And the month of August uh, is going to be closed in a few days. Yes, things have been somewhat quiet, but we're seeing that this is going to be ending very soon. So we just have to keep an eye out on what's going on in the tropics and uh, don't let this lack of named storms make you think that, oh, the season is going to be quiet uh, and uh, we won't have any major storms. But remember, it only takes one. It only takes one tropical cyclone to be uh, very destructive, to cause massive destruction and really be the talk of the hurricane season. Alright, and so that is really it for this update video, guys. And of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by. And if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.